Friendship United Methodist Church. Uh, we bless all of you. Good evening. God bless you. We bless all of you for joining us for Bible study today. Visitors and friends, uh, we are delighted to have you join us. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I, I, I love to praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Come on, saints. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him some praise wherever you are. Come on, give him some praise. He's worthy to be praised. I'm talking about the God who woke you up this morning. Let's go back. The one who watched over your sleep last night. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to call upon. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't let you sleep a minute too late this morning. The Lord woke you up right on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Friendship, visitors and friends, tonight we, we want to talk about fear. Living in fear. Praise God. And then I want to give you a topic. The theme is living in fear. The topic for this evening is, now here's what I want you to do. Live in the fear of God. Live in the fear of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come, O oh Lord, again in your presence to this Patch and disperse your words, O oh God, to your people. And, O oh God, I pray that they will receive your word, O oh God, with high esteem. I pray, O oh God, that they will accept the word. I pray, O oh God, that the word will fulfill their needs. I pray, O oh God, that your word will challenge them, O oh God, to live according to your will. And, oh God, we thank you for keeping us during this pandemic, oh God. Oh, Father God, it's, it's a long battle, oh God. But, Lord, we thank you for saving us and keeping us safe during this time, God. And thank you for watching over our family members, oh God. Oh, Father God, we are so blessed, God. And for that, Lord, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for providing for us. Now, God, as we hear the word, I pray, oh God, the word will draw someone closer to you. I pray, God, that you will change minds, change hearts, give us a fresh anointing, redeem us, oh God, from the hands of the enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Saints of God, Satan is busy. The devil is busy. Satan is working 24 hours. He wants you to, to fear him. Praise God. Uh, tonight, again, we want to talk about living in fear. The topic, and here is what I want you to do. Live in the fear of God and you will be protected. Praise God. There are two ways to live in fear, a healthy way and a harmful way. Today I want to talk about a healthy fear. What is fear? Fear is a feeling of reverence, awe, and respect or an unpleasant emotion caused by a sense of danger. Fear may be directed toward God or man, and it may be either healthy or harmful. The choice is yours. A healthy fear is reverence or respect. The Bible teaches that children 
or to respect their parents. And you can find this in Leviticus chapter 19, uh, verse 3. Praise God. The Bible also teaches wives are to respect their husbands. Amen. You can find this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. And it also says, slaves are to respect their masters. It's fine. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God. Now, let's keep in mind, the word respect is associated with the fear of God. Keep that in mind. Amen? The scriptures also declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Knowledge. Yes, Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, you can find these these scriptures, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. You don't have to turn, but just write it down. And also, fear is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 16, verse 16. Now, if you need these scriptures again, praise God, just go to Facebook. And not only that, I will... If time allow, I will give them to you before closing tonight. Amen? A harmful fear, a harmful fear is a sense of terror or dread. Believers are instructed not to fear human beings. Amen, somebody. I like that. Praise God. Matter of fact, you can, you can find this in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 10, verse 28. Again, I will give you these scriptures, uh, hopefully, before closing out. And also, it tells us not to fear men in Philippians, chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. Why? Because man cannot ultimately harm us. No man, no woman can harm you, saints of God. Let me say that again. No man, no woman can harm you. No flesh and blood can harm you. Amen, somebody. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wicked men, however, are constantly fearing other people, especially the righteous. Now hear this. Unbelievers, the wicked, are afraid of us. <laughs> they are afraid of what God has imparted in us. Have you ever been talking with someone whom you know that is unsaved and they can't stay long in the conversation? They find themselves walking away? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over the glory. Hallelujah. Let somebody say, thank you, Jesus. On the other hand, the unbeliever has every reason to be panic-stricken at thoughts of God. For he stands condemned before him already. You can find this passage in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 18. Yes, saints, I'm, give, I'm giving you a lot of scriptures tonight because I really want you during the course of the week to read these passages Oh my God, it will bless your life. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Today I want to teach on uh, the healthy fear. The healthy fear. Now just listen, saints of God. The healthy fear leads me to ask this question. What does it mean to fear God? What does it mean to fear God? You know, so many times people have... Uh, should I say a misconcept of what does it mean to feel God? Amen? But just listen. Listen, Amen. saints of God. When the Bible refers to the fear of the Lord, it means having a deep respect, a deep reverence and awe for God's power and authority. That's all it means to feel God. Praise God. 
rather than causing someone to be afraid of God, a proper fear of God leads one to love him. Now, saints of God, do you love the Lord? Do you really love God? Are you living in submission to his word? This is how we fear God. We have respect for God, respect for his son Jesus, respect for the Holy Spirit, respect for God's word, his written word in the Bible. Yes, oh, yes, glory, hallelujah. We fear, listen, saints, we fear many bad things. We, we fear, uh, 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 we fear uh, crime. We fear uh, uh, tragic accidents or just an accident. We fear uh, tornadoes, hurricanes. We fear these things, amen? But God doesn't want us to fear him. Why would God tell us to fear him? He wants us to love him and respect his position and his authority. Glory, hallelujah. God doesn't want us to be afraid of him. No, 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 no. He doesn't want us to be afraid of his spirit. Come on, saints. God doesn't want us to be af afraid of all that he has created. No, 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 no. Listen, saints of God, God doesn't want us to be afraid of him, but he wants us to be afraid of his judgment. There it is. God wants us to be afraid of his judgment, the consequences that comes with our sins. Now, that's what God wants us yeah. to be afraid of. Yeah, yeah. And this is called God's wrath. See, listen, oh, yeah. Yeah. God is a good God. He's a perfect God. Yeah. God doesn't do anything, saints of God, to harm us. But what we don't understand, Amen. here was God, and then God's wrath is here. In other words, the wrath came about right after the fall of man. Right after Adam and Eve disobeyed God, God set up his wrath. And see, if we don't walk according to his will, then God doesn't punish us, but he allowed his wrath to take over. Come on, somebody. God's wrath is nothing but punishment upon disobedience. That's what God's wrath is. And it comes with many things, saints of God. It could come with a, um, 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 a, a curse in a family. It could come in a, 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 with a, a curse in a generation. It could come with sickness. It could come with so many things, saints of God. This is the reason we need to get closer to God, saints of God. We need to fear God. Listen, don't fear him, but fear his judgment, his consequences. Oh, glory, hallelujah, saints of God, I believe now. God wants all of us, especially believers, to read and study his words so that we will know the truth of him. The Bible tells us the truth will set you free. The truth will make you free, saints of God. You have no fear because you're in the word. You're in the body of Christ. You, are, you, you have been adapted into the family of God. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There is no need to fear God, but fear his, 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 his judgment, his wrath. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Now, saints of God, I don't know how many of you are reading God's word. Listen, we all have fallen short. Let, let's be honest. We do not read God's word the way we should. We do not study God's word. No, we don't have a relationship with God. Some of us don't have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We, we, we get up in the morning, we rush into work, we are busy at work, we come home, we are tired and sleepy, we go to bed. We don't spend quality time with God. This is a sign of just existing. Saints of God, this is not good. Why do you think God placed us in quarantine? Come on, saints of God, can I just be real? God put us in quarantine because he wants a relationship with us. Folks are still living their life as they did before the pandemic came. 
Some folks come to church when they want to come. We treat God any old way. And expect God to bless us. Don't you know God can bless your entire family? God can bless your household. God can bless your offspring, your, your, your grands, your great grands, your great, great, great grands. Matter of fact, the word said, listen, he will, oh my God. He said he will curse back to fourth generation, but he will also bless. Glory, hallelujah, somebody. See, saints of God, the life that we live sets up, makes a pathway for our descendants. The lifestyle that you live. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Steady to show yourself approved by God. Let's go to 2 Timothy. I want to give you a few scriptures. 2 Timothy, praise God. 2 Timothy, and let's look at, praise God, verses 14 through the 16th verse. Yes. 2 Timothy, I'll give you a minute, praise God, to find it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at the 14th verse. Hear what it says. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent. To present yourself approved to God. <laughs> a worker who does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Say to God, this is what we should be doing right now in quarantine. We should be, we should be reading God's word so that we will know the truth. Hallelujah. We should be praying like we never prayed before. We should be fasting like we, like we never fasted before. Verse 16. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Some folk just speak trash, talk trash. They don't know the word. That's why they cuss all the time. They got to substitute some words. Hello, somebody. Can I talk to somebody here? This is why some of us have anger problems. Because we're not in the Word. See, the Word of God will direct your path. It will tell you, saints of God, how to carry on a, 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 a biblical conversation. You are a child of God. You are a queen of God. You are a king of God. But if you don't know the Word, saints of God, we are out of order. Now, let's go to praise God. Let me take you to, let's look, go to Acts chapter 9. Glory, glory, Acts glory. chapter 9. Now this passage of scripture, oh God. Once the church, <laughs> once the church, the body of Christ, once Friendship United Methodist Church, uh, Jacob Baptist Church, uh, Woolly Presbyterian Church. Come on, somebody. When all these churches get on one accord, great things happen. The church is not on one accord. Hear this. We're going to look at Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Now, hear this. 31, praise God. Hear what it says. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Now I have a I have a, a subtopic here. The church prospers. That's my subtopic. Hear what it says, verse 31. Then the churches, listen, when we get on one accord, when we get on one accord, when we all get in the body of Christ. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, let me ask, Friendship United Methodist Church, had peace and were, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. <laughs> somebody say increase. Can I get a witness somebody? 
Now, let's, let's go to praise God. Now, hear what Solomon said. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. I want you to see these passages. Proverbs chapter 1. Hear what it says. Proverbs chapter 1, praise God. Hear what it says. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 1. Hallelujah. I'm just about there. Bear with me. Uh-huh. Proverbs chapter 1. And let's look at the seventh verse. Amen. Hear what it says. Somebody say fear. Hear this. Fear. Hear this. Verse 7. Fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. See, if you if you if you if you're working around folks who refuse to yield to instruction or refuse to take orders, uh, something is out of order. Amen. Now let's go to let's go to Psalm one. 11 verse 10. Psalm 10. Psalm 111 verse 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. Psalm 11 verse 10. And here we are. Glory. Hallelujah. Psalm 111 verse 10. Are you there? Hear what it says. Oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. Oh, glory, hallelujah. His praise endures forever. Saints of God, can you imagine if we get the entire church on one accord, everyone living in the fear of God, we are, 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 God, we can move mountains. God will overshower us with his blessings. God will give us more than we ever had. Listen, your blessings start within the church. Whether you believe this or not, God, listen, your blessing begins in the church. And it goes from the church, praise God, to your, to your home. Hello, somebody. If you want the blessing of God, if you want the healing of God, let it start in the church. What do you mean, Pastor? Get into the church. I'm talking about the body of Christ now, saints of God. If you're in the body of Christ, then, then yo, listen, God's presence will bring you to the sanctuary. And when we get in the sanctuary, praising God together, worshiping together, let me tell you something. You're talking about healing? You're talking about deliverance and blessings? Hello, friendship. God bless you. God bless you. Just, I think we have another scripture. And we're going to close out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at, uh, let, let me save this one to next week. Praise God. Next week. We will be talking. We will give you part two next week. But saints of God, hear this. Thank you, Jesus. God placed us in quarantine for a reason. Listen, those of you who, who don't know, the same pandemic, not the same illness, same disease, took place in 1918. Read the history. And before that, there, there was another one back here somewhere in the 1800s. Let me tell you something. See, God has to sometime confront us with his wrath. Not because he hates us. No, he loves us. God loves us so much until he wants to sit us down in a quiet place so that we can read and pray and study his word and love everyone and love your enemies, your neighbors. God wants us to be one in the body of Christ. When God gets us there, God will open up. Hey, listen, he will open up the floodgates of heaven. God will shower us with healing, 
was healing, was healing, blessings, deliverance. Some folks, some folks have not changed their lifestyles since this coronavirus came along. Folks are still living the same way, uh, in, 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 indulging in the same sin, saints of God. God is not pleased. God Amen. wants us to read his word. And you know, the devil plays a trick on us. He used this tactic, I'm tired. I just got up from work. I don't have time. That's the devil. But when you find your space, your time to commune with the Lord, saints of God, I promise you, you will see a change in your life, in your family. God will begin to move mountains. And listen, who God? Believers are never shaken. We are just shifted. God shifts us from here to there. Hallelujah, somebody. Saints of God, I pray. I pray that this word will put you on the right path. Find your quiet room, your quiet time per day and read a scripture. Turn the TV on. Listen to ministers and pastors. They are preaching the same thing that I'm preaching. Watch how God will move mountains in your home. And saints of God, I'm going to say this. Something came to me on yesterday. And I'm not sure if it's God. I don't know if it's God. I don't want to speak it. But hear, hear, hear what God said to me. Oh, okay, hear what something said to me. And I pray to God it's God. God said, or something said to me, if my people, this is the, okay, this is the seventh month now, seventh or eighth month. Seven means what? Completion of the pandemic. Eight means what? A new beginning. God is saying, if all of my people would just find a church somewhere, just find a church, just go worship in the parking lot. You don't have to go in the sanctuary. Just go and stand up in front of that cross. Just go to that church door. Stop by that church in the parking lot and just offer a prayer to God. Saints of God, God will bring closure to this pandemic. That's a promise. I'm hearing this. I'm hearing this. Now, I'm going into fasting to make sure this is God's word. God wants us to pray three times a day. God wants those who are poverty lovers, those who are poverty stricken. God said, get up and there's a church in your community. Go and just stand in front of the door and pray and go home. Watch what he will do. Let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Saints of God, begin reading God's word. Begin reading God's word. Amen. Thank oh, you, yes. Jesus. <laughs>